So in today's Retro Bat setup guide, we're taking a look at Usebox. So Usebox is an open source platform, a little bit like Raspberry Pi or Ojoid, but it's designed primarily for coders to program games just like this one I'm playing now, which is an Arkanoids clone. So if you're into 8-bit and 16-bit games, and you're also into fantasy consoles, other setup guides which I've recently uploaded, then you're going to love Usebox. And in this setup guide, I'm also going to be showing you what this system has to offer it also comes with many free games so check this one out <laughs> Okay, before I start today's retro batting use box or Uzi box setup guide, just make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like if you like today's video. It really helps my channel out a great deal. Plus you get upstate retro emulation content as I release it. So we're looking at use box then today or Uzi box. I'm not sure how that's pronounced to be honest. Uh, and this is going to be my fourth video today. Now my ex, bless her little socks, would say I was quite manic at this point for uploading four videos. But that's another story. So uh, what we're going to do then is take a look at Usebox itself. And I'm going to refer to this as Usebox for now on. So you would have came across this folder in your ROMs folder in Retrobat. And you're probably wondering what this is. So Usebox itself is a little device and it's pretty much an open source system. And uh, programmers are programming tiny little games for like little 8-bit games. Uh, so very similar to the last few fantasy consoles that I've released setup guides for. So I'll leave this link in my description. And the device itself is a cute little Raspberry Pi looking system as you can see here. Uh, so it's got a couple of ports on there for joysticks. They look like 9-pin joysticks or SD cards. So uh, technically it looks a lot like something like a Raspberry Pi, but this is designed strictly for these old retro games, or should I say new retro games. So anyways, to get your games, these are predominantly going to be free. And I'm going to leave this link in my description as well. And you can see the type of games we got here. So like I say, a lot like 8-bit games maybe a little bit more polished and in some cases almost 16 bit so what we're going to do is head over to the retro bat shortcut open file location and bat gui and i'm sure at this point people watching me do this bit are getting sick of this but i'm going to do it just for new viewers to my channel we're going to open system list and let me just sort this out and we're going to go to system and from system we're going to just drop this down until we find that use box and let me just remind you again if you don't see this drop down just here check out my main comprehensive guides to set retro bat up it's likely you're missing a couple of installation files so then for our game extensions we need .uz files and we've got no emulator to download in RetroBat for this system. We're going to be using a RetroArch Libretro core, which is useM. Now, if we go back to the website, you'll notice that the file names on most of these are what it's asking for, .uz or uz. So plenty of games there, like I say. Uh, I've downloaded a hell of a lot of these games into a folder, which is on my desktop. And here they are. So lots of games there. And the pack I downloaded also came with some .zip files and inside of these are .bins. Now it's very unlikely these are going to work as it's just asking for .uz files. But I'm going to copy all of these and Control and A to highlight everything and right click and copy. And if I go back into that Retrobat directory, open file location, I'm going to go to ROMs and just scroll down until we get to use box use box and here we go so just paste all of those inside of there and there they are so let's open up retrobat now Okey dokes. Now, if you've done this correctly, we got a little picture of the use box itself and we got the use box logo up here. Let's just quickly see if we can scrape some artwork. So press start main menu scraper and scrape now. 
So it's quite unlikely a lot of these aren't going to scrape, but we're going to see. Sometimes you get lucky with these really obscure games. I found lately that when I was doing my virtual console or fantasy console setup guide, such as Pico 8, it was actually scraping more of those games than I gave it credit for, so we're going to see. And scrape and finish, so update game list to apply changes. So main menu by press and start, game settings, update game list, and yes. And here we go. So we got a lot scraped and some aren't. It looks a little bit bland, so I'm going to just change the way this looks. So if I go to main menu, user interface settings, theme configuration, if I go to game list view style, I'm going to change this to detailed and see if this makes any difference. So yeah, that's a little bit better. So as we can see, we got artwork for some of them, but we don't have any videos, but it doesn't really matter. So what I'm gonna do is go to view options by press and select, advanced system options, emulator. Now, technically we can actually use BizHawk and BizHawk itself is kind of like a front end, which I actually did a setup guide outside of Retrobat because I also do setup guides other than Retrobat, uh, but we can use that in here. Uh, what I'm going to do is just do what it says in Batch UI and just use the Retro, Retro Watch Core here. So leave it to Auto. And we got all the regular options, shader sets, decorations, and so on. But I'm going to boot up a game now and let's go for a classic like Arkanoid. So as you can see, that's the general style and aesthetic of what used box games are going to look like. I'm going to uh, pick something else randomly. Let's try out uh, BC Dash. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what that game was about, but yeah, um, it looked okay. That's all I'm going to say for that one. Okay, so we got a remake of the 1981 classic arcade game Donkey Kong, as it says. Uh, most people watching this video will probably know what the original looked like, so let's check this one out. Uh, what else have we got? So we got Dots or Mario. Well, obviously, this was a Nintendo NES game and a Game Boy game. We got anything interesting? What's Final Blood?
Right, so I couldn't draw any blood on there, let alone final blood, so I'm not sure what that game's about. And we've got a game here called Ghosty Ghost. This looks pretty interesting. a Flappy Bird uh, remake or clone of some sort. Uh, let's try out Happy Easter. So that's Buster from Tiny Toon Adventures, and that was an awesome cartoon in the 90s. I used to watch that. And also some good Tiny Toon games, too. And it looks like we got a clone there of uh, Jupiter Lander or Lunar Lander. So let's check this out. So I'm going to give up with that one, but if you like playing that type of game, physics-based games like that, then you've got a nice cheerful little jolly tune by Elton John, Rocket Man, in the background of that, if you select the music to be on. I've got Load Runner, which is obviously a very old-school classic game. Just give up with that one. And we've also got snakes, so looks like this should be like a Nokia 3310 game. too slow for me that version
And I'm going to check out another game. Obviously, we've got uh, Tetris here. I don't really fancy playing that. That's, uh, I think I played enough of that game as a kid. I'm just sick to death of Tetris at this point. Let's just check out Zombinator. So that's it for my retro bat in use box or use box setup guide today. Like I said at the start of the video, if you like what you see today, hit the notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro bat and beyond retro bat emulation content that I upload every day on my channel, Just Jamie. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.